It was pouring torrential rain as usual since we've gotten here. Robbie was out in the cockpit in the water in the rain transferring water from water buckets that we had collected rain in, clean fresh water from the sky into our Garifone bottles that we then drink from and the lightning hit the catamaran behind us. He said to me, I just saw the catamaran get hit as we just heard a thunder that was loud enough to make me jump. It was a it was a big scare. So I started unplugging my computer. I unplugged all my cameras that were charging batteries, except we usually unplug also the radio, but we hadn't been using our VHF radio, so I didn't unplug it, even though we usually unplug it during a lightning storm. Several minutes later, Robbie says about half an hour later, I felt like it was more like less than 10 minutes later, we got struck by lightning. And the first thing I noticed right away was the smell. Like, it was like getting hit by, I'm sorry to say, it was like getting hit by a bomb. It was like the, the boom was loud enough that Robbie's ears were ringing. I don't remember the actual hit. It was like whiteout, blackout, and the next thing I was doing is I was grabbing the dog's tail to stop him from running into the cockpit, and then I was grabbing at Robbie to get in from outside because he was out in the cockpit. I was, <laughs> I was pushing and pulling, grabbing and pulling at these two guys because the dog wanted to go out, and I didn't want the dog outside, and I wanted Robbie inside, and I was angry. I was like, why were you even outside? He doesn't remember me saying anything to him. He couldn't hear for a couple of seconds. Yeah, it was like, I felt the explosion of it in, in my chest. Like, it was a major boom, kind of smoke in inside the boat. So I was thinking fire, but then I rec recognized right away that the smell was not really like burning plastic or burning wood. It was more like the smell of burnt metal. Radio antenna at the top of the mast was vaporized or or melted. I've seen a video before of another YouTuber getting... He, he filmed a lightning strike somehow of his vessel and he started sinking because one of the metal components of the vessel under the waterline got blasted out in a lightning strike. So we started checking all around in the bilge to see if water was coming in anywhere. Now we have one connection to the water. Temporary. The chain that goes from the stay into the water and that's all good and wonderful because that probably dissipated some of it into the water. Maybe if you watched our last boat haul out videos, we took the grounding plate that was on this boat originally, uh, very poorly installed and the metal was corroded and, and done. We had never replaced or thought about what we were going to do for our next grounding plate for lightning strikes. So I attached a chain to our backstay and threw that over the side into the water. Our grounding to the water, the metal that allows a lightning bolt to transfer all of its energy from the top of our mast down back into the water, because that's what the lightning is looking for. It's looking for a way to get out of the boat once it hits the boat. It was a direct path from the top of the mast, our radio antenna down the stay and into the water. I think that saved us from having a catastrophic hull failure somewhere. I think that stopped us from having a potential sinking situation because that is definitely 100% where the energy transferred through. We were lucky that we could just, uh, we've lost some electronics, we can go to bed. <laughs> and we've had a lot of storms since then. Every evening here in the Rio Dulce, it's raining, there's lightning, there's thunder, and we've had several good bursts of thunder nearby. People are getting hit here. Apparently this is a regular thing. This spot in the Rio Dulce is a popular anchoring location, and according to locals and cruisers, dozens of boats have been hit this year and last year. Is the geography and the geology of the area heightening the chances of being struck here? According to NASA, the top lightning spots of the world are mostly located up rivers in Venezuela and Colombia. 
or near lakes and lush rainforests in the Congo. Kind of looks like the river mouth and lush rainforest here in Guatemala. So we're thinking a lot more about grounding in our really good book that one of our supporters has sent us in the past. We are reading more and paying more attention to the chapter on grounding your vessel. There are three pri principal mechanisms by which lightning can cause damage to boats. A direct strike, a strike ashore that is conducted on board via the shore power cord when the boat is plugged in, and a nearby strike that generates a magnetic field which induces voltage on the boat's wiring, once again causing a power surge. Yeah, so we're interested in maybe this having this kind of system, a lightning rod, an antenna of some sort, and we'll go directly into the bilge, and then we can either attach to our keel, the keel bolts, which I don't like that idea because I don't want the energy to go out through our encapsulated, our keel is covered in fiberglass, so it w the metal will not condu conduct outside of the keel without blowing off fiberglass, or we make a plate uh, near the keel where the lightning goes out. The book describes pretty well that you cannot completely protect your boat from getting hit, but you can prepare in order to reduce the chance of injury to crew or harm to the vessel. The main takeaway is that you must create a clear path for the energy to travel from the water to the top of the mast. To make sure that we don't have any sort of catastrophic hull failures because of lightning trying to get through from the top of the mast into the water, breaking through fiberglass, breaking through through hulls, breaking through metal components, in the bottom of your boat where they can't take it. So there's ways to set up your vessel so that it is grounded more safely. I think what we learned from this situation is that it's kind of unpredictable as to what the lightning will do. It's, it's hard to know how the electrical energy will travel through all the components of your vessel, even if you set it up properly. But if you are set up in such a way that you can easily transfer that en energy from the top of your mast down into the water without challenging that energy to travel through the rest of your systems then then you're in a better you're definitely in a better situation during these electrical storms that are still happening nightly here we both kind of have response like a traumatic we we experienced it a little bit as a traumatic event and we hear the thunder we see lightning and we're we're, we're pretty jumpy about it now. It arced onto the solar panels. It went through the radio antenna down the wire into our electrical panel, into our electrical system of our lights. The batteries didn't get affected and nothing that was unplugged got affected. All right, the sun's come up, so now we can see a little bit this morning of what went wrong last night electrical panel had a few buttons blow off when the lightning strike entered into our vessel through the radio antenna it traveled down through the vhf wire and into the electrical system bursting out through switches and lights this is the first time i'm going to press this we can still start the engine that's a good thing it's just that the batteries aren't charging and i already it went from 12.8 to 12.6 by me just doing that robbie so we don't get a lot of tries to start the engine. These are the fuses of the radio. <laughs> They're like, as the, as the lightning bolt went through it, went as the, the tiny little piece of wire immediately vaporizes, it leaves just enough vapor for an arc to be created and it just arcs. It must have arced because the fuses were absolutely useless. <laughs> they are five amp fuse and they have what? Five million amps of juice <laughs> passed. Through. I don't know how much. I don't know if it's extremely high voltage and low amperage. If it's both, if lightning is very high amperage and voltage. <coughs> so the windows leak. Then the water goes along and pools in this corner. And this pool of water, this nasty pool of water, which I usually have a rag that I clean up, decided to explode in the bulkhead here. And there's the propane line. What we used to have was uh, a little piece of chain to connect to just clamp onto the forward stay here. So when we're at anchor, lightning strike can go down the anchor chain. We do have a multimeter that barely functions anymore. So our anchored neighbors came by to help us out. 
bringing their brand new multimeter over so that we could troubleshoot our solar panel situation. I'm isolating each panel, I'm isolating the system, and then I can see if I can get at least maybe one panel working. It looked as though some of our solar panels were still working, despite the lightning's energy traveling through them. However, the fact remained that the panels were basically not charging our batteries. So it came down the mass, it arced to the wet rubber. We really need... How many solar panels do you think are still working? Not sure. <laughs> two. One. One or two of the panels. One or two of the panels are working. One and a half panels are 100%. working. 100%. Sure, one's not. So we got half the panels working. We don't need as much solar charge. Here, Chris was demonstrating that our batteries were able to light up this small LED light without any problem. But when touching it to the solar panels, they were barely able to power it. If you're getting one series of 19 volts. I'm getting voltage on, I'm not getting after Right. Luckily we had everything, all the uh, nav stuff unplugged. <clears throat> our computer unplugged. Cell phone unplugged. I threw the cell phone in the cast iron pot, but I didn't I didn't throw anything else in the cast iron pot. Alright. Oh. oh, I heard a beep. <clears throat> That's good. That's what we survived. Yeah, because at the end of this, we have our depth sounder, which I was worried about in terms of its contact with the water. Um, sonar working, and we got a position on the boat. The damage is fried solar panels, potentially fried solar charger. We lost our navigation lights, the red and, the red and green up front. The wire connection just cut itself. I think we lost the uh, white at the back. We lost the anchor light, a cockpit anchor light. We lost all but one of the inside lights. Oh, well, the uh, radio's definitely The fried. radio's definitely fried. The electric <coughs> electricity entered through the radio. Yeah, we think it came actually through the radio. Chop plotters got uh, spared because we had to uh, remove them physically from any connectivity. The only physical damage on the boat, other than electronics getting fried, Yes, the only uh, visible damage on the boat. was the bulkhead right where you're sitting, really close to the propane line. <laughs> we have the electrical uh, backbone of our boat running on the opposite, opposite side, side so that it's nowhere close to the propane line. And uh, lighting found its way two inches, two inches from the, the, pro the copper, <laughs> free standing copper propane line. That's so that was the most uh, unnerving thing yeah. to me. We were on our way to Ram Boatyard to haul out. We hadn't actually picked the date, but we went and we, we arranged everything other than the date. And I think that the best thing to do is to just get the boat out of the water now, just as we were going to in the first place. <laughs> and uh, that way we can be plugged in, charge the batteries on shore power. So right now we need a couple new solar panels, possibly a a new s charge controller and we're gonna need new lights and stuff but um, I think that's easier done in the boatyard no yeah we had one or possibly two more starts in our battery bank for the motor so we headed to the haul out ramp early to make sure that we would arrive on time for our very important appointment we do not have a proper reverse gear or neutral capability of course but we managed to arrive at the beautifully constructed wooden dock without issue so we rushed towards the dock after getting hit by lightning. Uh, the next day we asked if they could haul us out and they could. And then uh, there was more lightning. There, was, there has been rain and lightning and thunder every night that we've been here. There's been one evening where it's been lighter, where there's just been a little trickle of rain. But every evening, rain, lightning. When the ram team was ready to haul us out, they swung the vessel around and eased Inesperada into the travel lift.
beside the depth sounder? What the hell? This is new. I didn't. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. No, no, no. That's we didn't hit something. Maybe we did. Maybe something hit. As usual, the boat now on dry land, it was time to inspect the hull and to see what jobs lay ahead of us. The barrier coat looks pretty good. A couple of tiny little bumps. When we go with the sander, we're gonna see how deep those are. You think this got cleaned by lightning? I think so, because there's like, there's like no greenery. It looks like it looks like something zapped. <laughs> Zap clean. It looks zappy, zippy, zappy clean. This boat still has anti fouling on it. This boat hardly has anti fouling. Oh, I'm surprised. Very nice facilities here at Ram. We felt very confident as the boat was being lifted out of the water. Good team of people paying a cl close attention to what they're doing. So we went on the gravel here. You pay a bit less somehow, I'm not sure why. I prefer the gravel. Yeah, yeah if, if you fall off the boat and land on the gravel as opposed to the pavement. <laughs> no, seems... because of that. It's... Okay, that's a good point that Robbie made. On the gravel, the water drains better. There's a lot of rainwater here, so you don't have big puddles under your boat. There's less heat. We got power, we got water. Well, we got to get a bigger hose, a longer hose. Hi, shrimp. Like, where am I, man? You wanna oh. put him in the water? I wanna go put him in the water. <laughs> Not a perfect fiberglassing job. Wait. It's very impatient, this little dog. Here we are, out of the water. New neighbors, weird land neighbors. Time to start sanding, Ravi. I started sanding the bottom, but soon figured out that we could probably save a ton of sandpaper by getting the pressure washer to come over and clean our bottom, and potentially get most of the remaining anti-fouling off. We couldn't use the pressure washer ourselves, but they allowed us to hire one of their people in the yard to pressure wash the boat, which was, I think in the end, we, we deliberated, we weren't sure if we wanted to pay for it or not, but in the end, it's it's really good for us to have power wash the bottom because basically he took off, he managed to take off a lot of the remaining uh, shitty anti fouling. That came off almost like let's say 85 percent of the anti fouling is already off the boat. Just have to sand lightly to prep the surface for the new paints. We're gonna work on the transom a little bit, and then the plan is to then also work on the deck. There was still water inside our rudder and inside our keel. It's just a little bit of water. It's not like it's like gushing out. The water was getting in through these blisters probably that had opened up in the last two years being in the water. So the problem with doing it bit by bit the way we did, there's still some little delamination slash osmosis spots, especially on the rudder here. I didn't get every single one and it lets in water. Our friends got their boat sandblasted so kind of the opposite of what we're doing. We've done ours very piecemeal, very bit by bit, fixing each little hole. And you can see how many we still have left of osmosis, but an opposite way here. It's the first time I kind of get to see the hull fully sandblasted on a fiberglass boat. I'm gonna have to go and do a lot of fairing. Depends on how smooth they want it. The sandblasting gets really in there. These would have been voids <clears throat> that are all full of uh, vinegary, stinky osmosis water. You go at this with a sander or a grinder, you're gonna get a lot of vinegar in your face. Back at our own boat, our keel also suffered from a blister problem. Water that was stuck inside the imperfections of our previous fiberglassing job caused those rusty blisters to break through the fiberglass and the paint. So I would be opening those up to dry them out and try to fiberglass and paint over them again. 
We also now have added projects, of course, because we got hit by lightning. And we're going to have to do a whole electrical project that we did not anticipate. It is most convenient to go downtown and do groceries by having a dinghy and an outboard motor. All of the cafes and most of the shops allow you to tie up to their docks freely. Walking along the main street was just as hectic and congested as I remembered from last time we were here in Rio Dulce. Looking at new solar panels, but we rather fix the ones we have. It's a good place to get spare parts for tools. All our sanders need spare parts. They're all missing something. Our friend Nick brought us some items that are must-haves here in the boatyard. Extension cords so somebody can work on top and bottom. Ice, ice, baby. Robbie set up some shade for working on the top side. And we could finally start to rid ourselves of the hot, ugly anti-skid on our deck. A lot of fun, I'll show you. It's great fun. It would only be a little bit hotter just to make things more fun. Robbie is finished removing all the anti skid with hammer and chisel mostly. The boat is already cooler. The pilot house is very much rotting from all angles, all places that water can come in, water is coming in. So we want to remove as many deck fittings on the pilot house as possible. Now we just needed to sand both the top and the bottom of the boat completely. All the while, we were worrying about getting struck by lightning again. We wanted to make sure that we were grounded temporarily through the anchor chain. Oh yeah, I also had some coverall suits from Total Boat. So upcoming sanding jobs were going to be a little more comfortable. We absolutely appreciate every one of you for coming along on the journey. Thank you and see you again soon.